this is a method to separate molecules according to their different charges and the size of the molecules. But it's used to separate DNA fragments and it's used to separate proteins from different alleles of the same gene. Okay? A movement for electrophoresis depends on the total charge of the molecule. The more the molecule is charged, the more it moves. The size of the molecule, the smaller the molecule, the faster it moves. Positively charged molecules will be attracted towards the cathode. Negatively charged will be attracted towards the anode. The type of the gel and the pores of the gel will also affect the rate of movement or the speed of movement of the molecule. We use the gel electrophoresis to carry out a genetic profiling of DNA fingerprinting. First of all, we cut the DNA uh, fragmenting it to cut the DNA and fragment it we are using restriction enzymes and the restriction enzymes are cutting at the VNTR regions variable number time and repeats that differ from one person to another they are only the same in identical twins. When we cut at the VNTR regions, the DNA will be fragmented and the fragments will have different lengths. Fragments of different lengths. After we fragment the DNA, we are going to look loaded in the agarol gel at the well at the cathode side. So the gel electrophoresis, the gel is made of agarose gel and the gel has wells in it. The wells are made by special forks and the DNA is loaded at the cathode side in a buffer solution. And then an electric field is applied between the cathode and the anode. The cathode be a force. We are loading the cathode. The lower negative, yes. That's the cathode. And that's the anode. And we are going to load the DNA fragments in the wells at the cathode site. And then we apply the electric field so the fragments will start to move. Speed of movement is determined by the size of the fragment. The smaller flat fragments move faster, but they move furthest towards the anode. And it's going to separate the DNA according to its length. Okay? Uh, the DNA fragments are not visible because the DNA is colorless. So in order to see the pattern of spread of the DNA fragments, we need to make the DNA fragments visible. And that's why we use DNA probes. So the DNA probe is a short length of DNA. It's a short length of DNA. It simplifies to be complementary to the VNTRs. As we said, the VNTRs are specific base repeats. So they are the same bases that are being repeated on and on and on. So we can just make the short length of these bases so it's going to be complementary to the VNTRs. And this short length of DNA complementary to the VNTRs is going to be made using labeled nucleotides. The nucleotides are either labeled radioactive with radioactive material or with a material that will allow them to grow fluorescence in ultraviolet light. So the nucleotides are specially synthesized either with radioactive material or a material which will allow them to glow in ultraviolet light. 
we're going to put an absorbent paper over the gel electrophoresis, over the tray, in order to remove the DNA fragments on this paper. Okay, so the DNA fragments will be transferred from the tray onto the absorbent paper. And then we heat the absorbent paper in order to separate the DNA fragments into two strands, to separate the two strands from each other. So I can have single strands. And then we put the DNA probes. And we are relying on the fact that bases are going to join by the complementary base bearing rule. So the probes will start to move and they will start to bind with the complementary bases. If it's a radioactive probe, if it's a probe made with radioactive nucleotides, this is going to print black on X-ray films. So if I get an X-ray film and I put it on top of this absorbent paper, the X-ray film will have black bandings. And those are the DNA patterns for this individual. No, it, if the nucleotides used were made with something radioactive, they are labeled radioactive, the radioactivity prints black on an X-ray film, you know, the X-ray films. So if you get an X-ray film and you put it on top of your paper, in AI, have DNA probes with DNAs, that it's going to print black lines on the X-ray film. So these black lines are your DNA fragments. That's the DNA fingerprint. That's the pattern show. Yes. Bad mama na denaturing the strands. Bad mama na heating to separate the strands into single strands. Ida, the paper is the puka. And I'm heating the paper. I should understand the fact. You must have done the copy or you have to make the photo. The other one, the electrophoresis, I paper and I heat the paper. Actually, in the old time, like that, you get an extra mark in it. Have to change the paper. Now, when you see that have to change the paper, you want to match the heating on the tool on the electrophoresis to separate the strands. You get the mark for separating the strands. But if you're going to put it on the paper and then you're going to heat, those are two marks. If you're just going to heat on the gel, that's a mark, and you get the other marks. It's not a problem if if you're going to add no marks to the other. هي بتتنقل على الاوزوربيك بيبر علشان هي البروسيجر بتبقى مور كومبليكيتد ذات ذس هي بتتنقل على الاوزوربيك بيبر علشان بيتعمل لها الكيتنج تبقى سيبريتد بعد كده الاوزوربيك بيبر دي بتتحط في التراي فيها سوليوشن مخصوص وبيتحط البروبس فيهم علشان البروبس تبدا تتحرك وتمسك الكومبليمنتري بيس بتاعك اوكي فانت في في ستيب في النص مش عليك وقع <تصفيق> لو انتم بصيتوا على الفيديوهات اللي انا بعتلكوا الفيديوهات بتاعتكم مبينه كل الكلام نعم. سنتيسايز سنتيتك ميد انا بجيب الميتايز وبعملها على اساس انها تبقى كومبليمنتري تو البي ان تي ارز. ذا بيسز اوف البي ان تي ارز ار نو انا بعمل كومبليمنتري بيسز اوكي؟ طيب اف وي ار يوزنج نيوكليوتايز ذات ار ليبل فلوريسنس يبقى just in the anabamid, in heating to separate the strands, and then I put the probes and I put the paper under ultraviolet light, and it's going to glow, the bands will start to glow, and that's how I see them. Okay? But here that, this is how to make the DNA visible on a gel electrophoresis. And as we said, we're going to use it for DNA profiling, for genetic profiling, in order to see um, relationships between individuals, in order to see, uh, in order to identify a suspect in a crime scene, and it's also used in order to um, extract or isolate a specific gene. If you recall, when we first started the insulin, how to measure the engineered insulin, we first said, said we have to isolate the gene. And we can isolate the gene by two methods. Either by isolating
updating it from the messenger RNA, the one that we already took for the incident, and then the messenger RNA from the BFA uh, cells of the iris of Wagner hat, or by isolating the gene from all the DNA. So if I want to isolate the gene from the DNA, then I'm going to get the DNA of the person, and I'm going to cut the DNA with the restriction enzymes, and I'm going to put the fragments on the gel electrophoresis, and I'm going to separate the fragments. But when I put the DNA probes, I'm putting a probe complementary to the gene wanted. Okay? And so only the gene will be glowing, and I know the position of the gene, and this is how I can isolate the gene. Now, but this is a more complicated procedure, because I have to cut the DNA with restriction enzymes, I have to use electrophoresis, I have to use DNA probes. It's much more complicated than just isolating it from the messenger origin. Yes. And you will give even messenger RNA because it's easier, it's faster, and you're getting many copies of the gene. Uh, if you are extracting it from the messenger RNA, usually the cell responsible for making this protein will have many copies of the messenger RNA. And you are having many copies of the gene. Number two, when you get the messenger RNA, you have the gene. You're not still searching for the gene within thousands of genes <coughs> in the DNA. It's much, much simpler. It's easier. That's why we are getting it from the messenger RNA. Yes. Oh, in fluorescence, the DNA probes will glow in ultraviolet light. So when I add the DNA probes to the DNA fragments that I have on the genetic pieces, the probes will move and bind with the complementary bases. Then you put the ultraviolet light and the bands will start to glow. It's a length of DNA, synthetically made, using label nucleotides, and it is made to be complementary to the DNTRs. Well, and the DNTRs are basically Yes, the DNTRs are basically the same thing. And that's the whole thing. The DNTRs are the same thing. Any one of them is the same thing. But the repeats are the same thing. And the repeats are the same thing. We repeat the pathway from one region of the DNA so to the other. We use the physical control. We focus on the DNA. Aiyah, we after we do the electrophoresis and we separate the fragments, we do the heating to show the double strands of DNA to the single strands. Then you add the probes. Aiyah, we put them up and we have to do the harak to finish the single strands. The complementary base is very good. We start to see the DNA. Okay. Right. Only in the gel electrophoresis can also be up. I got to tell you that. Usually, at the side of the gel electrophoresis, I mean, I'm going to test as well. Okay. And as soon as I'm going to be comparing between different DNA samples, say, for example, let's say that we have the crime, the crime scene. أو لو أنا عايز أعمل relation between individuals أو whatever usually عشان دي ساعات بتيجي في paper five لو في مش فاهمين what's that في يبقى في column the side of the jet electrophoresis وده بيبقى في separate يعني specific bandings of DNA specific bandings of DNA with distances معروفة Can you say, for example, this band is in this distance from the anode. This band is in this distance from the anode. Well, be able to know each band is made of how many bases? They scale. It's like a scale for the DNA fragments. Yeah, for example, ممكن أنا the band in the most recent position that is, for example, 500 bases. The band in the most recent scale that is, for example, 500,000 bases. فأنا لما ألاقي باند من الفاتر بتاعتي موجودة هنا أبقى عارفة إن الـ length of this band is 500,000 bases ممكن هو يسألك مثلا في paper 5 يقول لك how many bases are in the DNA fragment مثلا اللي هو عملها labeling ما هو كله بيتحط من عند الكاثود لأن الـ DNA is not to be charged you always load at the cathode لو هي جات مثلا سي فور 
example, an anti band phenol band phenol. And I know in the, this is 200,000 bases. Okay, that this is 200,000 bases, this is uh, 250,000 bases. Well, an anti band for NOS. Yeah, but we must have 225,000 bases. I yeah, could have lots of them. يعني هي لو ما جاتش في نفس البوزيشن بتاعه السكيل بتاعك بتاخديها بالتقريب هيتحرك لازم هيتحرك تووز دي انود ولازم هيسيبريت السكيل اللي في الجنب ده اتس سكيل فور ذا بوزيشن اوف دي ان اي فراجمنتس اوف نون لينث يعني ده التاني فده البوزيشن ده الدول ذاتس ا دي ان اي فراجمنت سكيل It's a scale showing the position of DNA fragments of known length. Yeah, if they're going to die, we'll find the length of each fragment. They have to have in a they have ten bases. But in the back of the study, you have to be able to find the fragments in that particular ten bases. Okay. How about can I use the gel electrophoresis to separate proteins of? Different alleles of the same gene. You know that different alleles are going to make different proteins because they have different base sequences for different amino acid sequences. And again, proteins have charges. Stands for the length of the DNA fragment. يعني أنا ال fragments اللي واقفة في الحتة دي it's a fragment of length 500,000 bases. ال fragment اللي واقفة هنا it's a fragment of length 500 bases. أنت عارفها من ال scale اللي في الجنب. This is a scale. It's a set scale. It's a set scale known with only. فأنت لما بتعمل ال gel electric وتبدأ تقارن بالسكيل هتعرف بالتقريب كل بعد عندك is a length of 10 base. ايه؟ الحته بتاعت الدي ان اي المقطوعه مش احنا بنعمل فراجمنتنج للدي ان اي ريستريكشن انزيمز فبيتقطع لفراجمنتس اوف ديفرنت لينث بس هو كل ما يطلع لفوق كل ما بقى اكتر كل ما بيكون ناحيه الكاثود معناها ان اللينث بتاعه اكبر أي فرامنت أو دي إن إي is made of bases. فهيكون فيها عدد bases. أيوة أيوة على أساس standard. That's the standard. هما جايبين دي إن إيز made with specific length. وعملوا كيف كيف ده؟ جايبين فرامنت فيها 100 دي إن إي 100 bases. A fragment we have 200, fragment we have 300, fragment we have 1000, fragment we have 2000. How many fragments of DNA of known length? So how many are in the length of DNA? All the fragments. We have to look at gel electrophoresis to see the position of the gel on the gel. We have to look at standard scale. So we have to look at the standard scale. The fragment that we have to look at here is from you. This is a fragment that we have to look at. Okay, they have any proteins. So proteins can also be charged. The N in amine group, the body negative charge with carboxylic group, we can be body. Sorry, in acid amine can be body positive charge, carboxylic group can be body negative charge. So the amino acids next to them, they have body from charges. The proteins will be negative charge, and the movements have to be according to. The total charges we got in protein. In protein, the Z, mungkin be amilha, mungkin be tiki filip the head, either by the charges or by the size of the protein, the number of amino acids. And you go example. An example in the mawkut hamdena in the syllabus is for the hemoglobin. Okay, hemoglobin in the sickle cell anemia. We know that a mutation that happens in the gene for the beta polypeptide chain of the hemoglobin, the beta globin results in a base substitution. And due to this base substitution, an amino acid valine is substituted for glutamine in the mutated hemoglobin. And we all know 
that glutamine is charged, but valine is not charged. Okay? Which means that the hemoglobin made by the mutated allele has less charges than the beta globin made by the normal gene. So if we make gel electrophoresis for your hemoglobin or for anyone's hemoglobin, we will know what type of alleles they have. So if we, for example, make, uh, I will take a normal person with HBA, HBA, H, sorry, HBN, HBN, okay? And I will take a heterozygous HBN, HBS, and I will take HBS, HBS. Yes. بحط الهيموجلوبين اه بحطها كده على بعضك وحطها جوه الالكتريك فيسس وشغل عليك الالكتريك فيسس اخد الهيموجلوبين اخد الهيموجلوبين من الريد بلاد سيلز اخد الهيموجلوبين من الريد بلاد سيلز اوكي المفروض المفروض ان النورمال هيموجلوبين هاز مور تشارجز that a normal hemoglobin move further towards the anode. The position that the normal hemoglobin will take a henna. That's the position of the normal. The position that the signals will take a fog shuaya. That's the position of the signals. No, the protein will have charges. It will have amino acid stamina. الفعلين بس هو اللي معنيتوش شارجز فهو اتنوز بس اتنوز less further مش أقل less charges فاتنوز less towards the anode النورمال هينوز أكثر towards the anode الأيديا بقى أفتعت الباندلز يعني مثلا الهوموزايجس نورمال هيموجلبن هتلاقوا هتتركوا باند عاملة كده at this position. Okay? And it's your side is at the band at this position. The band at this position. We have the band alpha. The band alpha. Here I have the band alpha. Because the hemoglobin is here. لكن هنا بان ارفع علشان في هيموجلوب هنا وهيموجلوب هنا عايزين الاليس ده كل البروتين ده هنا لكن هنا شويه هنا وشويه هنا الهوموزايدس ده هيبقى كده ايه؟ ده الجل لا انا حاطه البروتين نفسه انا حاطه الهيموجلوب نفسه هنا عم سبريتنج بروتينز نوت دي دي ان اي انا هنا عم ايزوليتنج دي هيموجلوب I am taking the hemoglobin. I am taking the hemoglobin that not so. I am the person that heterozygous. Is he a trait? Well, is he homozygous signal? Well, is he homozygous normal? فأنا بأخد الهيموغلوب بتاعه وبعمل له جل إلكتروفوريسيس وشوف البانز بتاعة الهيموغلوب واقف فين مش تلفظ ده عشان الـ Oxygen بقى بعدين عشان يعني ما أنا لسه ما اتكلمتش على الـ نعم على أساس الـ Charges اللي فيهم معلش يا هيثم على أساس الـ Charges اللي فيهم على أساس إن الـ Single Hemoglobin فيه في less charges than Normal Hemoglobin The traits, the traits, the amount of both types of hemoglobin is more than you. So now, if you look at the single cell anemia, it's a co-dominance. مش بيتقسم اللي عندهم تريد فور سيكل سيل انيميا بوث جين بوث اليوز ار اكسبرس يس هي هاز بوث تايب اوف هيموجلوبين عشان كده وان هي هاز شورتج اوف اوكسجين الريد بلاد سيلز بتاعته بتتحلى بسيكل يس 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 ي
ان الاتش دي ان الباند بتاعه بتبقى كده والسايز بتاعها كده هو كل اللي بيعمل الاتش بي اس المفروض الباند بتاعها بيبقى كده في البوزيشن ده والسايز بتاعها كده فلو هو هوموزايتس للاتش بي ان هيبقى عنده اثنين من دول في نفس البوزيشن لو هو هوموزايتس للاتش بي اس هيبقى اثنين من دول في نفس البوزيشن بتاع الاتش بي اس لو هو هيتروزايتس هيبقى واحده هنا عند الاتش بي اس واحده هنا عند الاتش بي ان اوكي وانا بقول دي عشان بيبر فايف لما هتيجي كويشنز في بيبر فايف هتلاقوا معمول رفيعه ومعموله تخينه، الفاميلة التخينة دي معناها ايه؟ والرفيعه معناها ايه؟ معناها ايه؟ لان انتوا من ده بتقدروا تعدوا الفريكونسي اوف ذا اليلز. نعم. الرفيعه يعني مثلا التخينة دي معناها ان هو عنده اثنين اتش بي ال، اسمه زايدس تو اتش بي ال. الرفيعه دي معناها ان هو عنده اليل واحد اتش بي ال. عشان كده الاتش بي ان كله اللي هو قفلنا فبقى قفلنا ما هوش اكبر اكبر ما هوش اكبر منها لا أنا قلت السايز مختلفة، أنا قلت التشارجز مختلفة. أنا قلت التشارجز مختلفة، فعشان كده they move differently. أنا قلت الـ HPS عليه less charges. لأنه one of the amino acids has no charges. الـ HPS، الـ HPS الهيموجلوبين بتاعه، the signal hemoglobin has less charges than the normal hemoglobin. أنا هنا مش حاطة دي على فكرة. أنا هنا مش حاطة دي أنا أنا حاطة دي موجب من نفسه. أنا حاطة دي موجب من نفسه. لكن ده بقى الجينو تايب أوف ذا بيرسون. لما بكتب الجينو تايب بتاع البيرسون ده دازنت مين إن أنا حاطة دي أنا على الجالي إف بيست. أنا حاطة دي موجب من نفسه. فدي موجب أوف هوموسايدس نورمال بيرسون هوز هي موجب إز أول نورمال. And has more charges than the second hemoglobin will move further downwards. The second hemoglobin, as an ando valine, will valine is not charged. It's a bit of a fool. The normal hemoglobin more charges, but it's a bit of a fool.